Well, one dissident News Corp shareholder who will be travelling to LA tomorrow for the AGM is Stephen Main, now also the Australian Shareholders Association's representative for News Corp. Stephen Main, thanks for joining us there. Hi, Tiki. Now, we know a proxy advisory firm ISS want 13 of the 15 directors removed. You only want five scalps. Why is that? Well, clearly there'll be no one left to run the company if you sack 13 of the 15. So we've taken a more measured approach and, uh, and hand-picked our targets. People like Andrew Knight, uh, chairman of the Remuneration Committee, been there 20 years, former executive. Arthur Siskind, a Murdoch loyalist for 30 years, now 72. We think he should go. The two boys, uh, Lachlan and James Murdoch, uh, we believe that they should both go uh, to dilute the Murdoch family control and management influence on the board. And uh, also Viet Dinh, who's chairman of the Nomination and Governance Committee, is too close to the Murdoch family to be in that position. Interestingly, you want to, you're happy to keep Rupert Murdoch on the board, but not as chairman. Now, the News Corp board disagrees with this, saying, quote, this remains the most effective leadership structure for the company as and is in the best interests of its stockholders. Well, Comsec have put out an analysis this month showing that News Corp was the fourth worst performer in the ASX top 50 over the past decade. And I've even seen some figures this week that if you measure it from uh, August 1992, the company's underperformed the Australian market by 75%. It has been a shocker in relative terms for investors. Rupert's been in charge for 58 years. He's 80 years old. The governance is a mess. Phone hacking was a disaster. So clearly we think it's time for the world's oldest and longest serving CEO to step aside for Chase Carey and to also step aside for an independent chairman who can clean up the governance at News Corp. Mm. Uh, the board has put forward some dis different statistics, uh, basically uh, supporting Rupert Murdoch's salary package. And I know there's been big focus here in Australia on, on packages at AGMs. But uh, uh, the board, I think, have quoted 50%, uh, nearly 50% shareholder return this year, which compares favourably against, you know, Comcast, the Walt Disney's, those sort of companies. Well, with these things, it's lies, damn lies and statistics. It all depends on when you start the measure. And uh, the News Corp share price was, was way down a year ago. And, and OK, it has bounced back in recent times, partly because the company's instituted a US $5 billion share buyback. And Rupert Murdoch, got a 47% pay rise to a record $33.3 million last year. It's just over the top. He doesn't need it anyway. He's worth $5 billion and the performance has been very shoddy. So uh, we're against the remuneration report and we're against Rupert Murdoch continuing to underperform for shareholders. That remuneration report is likely to go through, though, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it's not as though that they're going to have problems with the two strikes rule over there in Delaware. Well, the, the, the Americans don't have two strikes, and actually this will be the first ever vote on a remuneration report at News Corp. I think, like with many of the directors, uh, Rupert and his family will vote in favour of his own pay packet, of course, and the directors, and the Saudi prince, uh, who owns about 7% of the voting stock, he'll probably be as loyal to Rupert as he has been in the past. But I think you'll find a very clear and substantial majority of the independent, neutral voting shareholders will vote against the remuneration report and will vote against a number of the directors tonight, uh, on, on, on Friday, I should say, in the US. And that will send a very strong message that the, the people who own 87 per cent of the company, the non-Murdoch shareholders, are sick and tired of this show and they want some substantial governance and board changes. How strong do you think, particularly the Australian fund managers, will be in, in, in pushing for changes to corporate governance? Because uh, I know independent director Peter Barnes was out here, obviously, with Rod Eddington, meeting with the Australian Superannuation Council last month. And I think you met with one or both of those directors. Yeah, look, I had a two-hour uh, discussion with both of those directors uh, uh, three or four weeks ago, and I also had a discussion with Peter Barnes after the Ansel meeting this week, and he's chairman of Ansel. Clearly, the Australian funds, through AXI, uh, they're calling for six directors to be given uh, the boot, and they want some substantial action uh, taken. So I think you will see the major Australian investors voting aggressively for change. Just on the phone hacking scandal, you believe it's James Murdoch, not Rupert Murdoch, who should be held responsible. Why? Well, I think ultimately uh, Rupert's responsible as well. I mean, he told the AGM last year there was nothing going on and uh, it was all a big beat-up. And uh, the fact that, uh, you know, he hasn't really held James to account whenever everyone else has been thrown overboard does show that, you know, the Murdochs tend to run the show 
for their own benefit and for themselves. And uh, I think both of them are responsible, but James obviously was more closer to the action, uh, you know, specifically with some of those uh, controversial secret settlements at the time. Mm -hmm. People talk about the Murdoch factor having a, a depressive effect on the share price. Can you put a, a value on what the market cap would be if we didn't have this sort of governance? Well, I think they do call it the Murdoch discount. You know, if you buy the stock, you suddenly you've got to worry he's going to pay $650 million to buy his daughter's television production business, which is what we saw, saw with Shine. And, you know, you wake up in 2007 and suddenly Rupert's paying $5 billion for the Wall Street Journal because he loves newspapers. When they've already written off $2.8 billion on that, suddenly he wants to buy MySpace. There goes another billion out the door. So clearly, if you had some discipline on acquisitions and you actually had a proper share structure where, you know, 70% of the other shares actually got to vote, you might see a takeover premium in the stock and you'd have the usual disciplines of being able to remove directors who don't perform. Briefly, Stephen, what do you hope to achieve by going over there? Well, personally, this is my 12th encounter with Rupert at an AGM. It's the one day of the year where shareholders can front the management, extract some concessions, have some debate. So I'm hoping to you know, pile on the pressure for some governance reforms uh, at News Corp. And uh, if we don't get any meaningful governance reforms, well, then obviously at next year's AGM, we'll be putting up a resolution to formally propose getting rid of the two-class voting structure and uh, you know, maybe putting up some new directors. So it's about creating a shareholder a culture of shareholder pressure, uh, demanding some transparency and accountability, and you need to be face to face with the board, asking the hard questions often to achieve that sort of outcome. Well, Stephen Main, thank you very much for joining us. I guess uh, don't forget your flak jacket. Indeed. Thanks, Tim.